Yeah, she's going to have a prayer, and then we'll have speakers, a few speakers, and then we got chow, so whenever you guys want to start eating and sit down, wait till after the prayer. Here we go. God, we are assembled here today to give honor and knowledge to those brave veterans, males and females, who have served our country and who have served us well. Some are not with us, they are with us in spirit, and we thank them. We thank each and every one who is here today and represented, especially our Vietnam vets. This is a true long overdue, but we know that you love each and every one of your sons and daughters and you welcome them home if no one else did. So with your love and with great gratitude, for all those who are present here, thank you, veterans, and thank you, God. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Flowers. Thank you. My name is John Martinez, and uh, I wanted to say just a little bit, a little personal story. I was born here in Grants. I was raised here in Grants. I've done a little bit of traveling in my 68 years, here across our country and in other parts of the world as well. And I've always been very proud to say that I am from Grants, New Mexico. But I have never been as, as I am today to say that I am from Grants, New Mexico. Thank you for turning out. Thank you for being part of today. And most of all, thank you for the veterans who have served in the many different wars. But most importantly to me, being a Vietnam veteran, this means so much to me. And I know it means so much to those who served alongside me. So on behalf of all Vietnam veterans to the city of France, I say thank you. 
Okay, so for the rest of the program, I'm going to turn this over to our Honorable Mayor, Martin Hicks. Okay, let me start this off as I have to with all my thank yous, okay? First of all, I've got to thank my Lord Jesus Christ in heaven because without him I would not be here. I wouldn't be doing any of this. Secondly, I've got to thank my mom. Dad has already passed. Um, I'd like to take the time here to thank Harry Garcia. Where you at, Harry? Harry's here somewhere. Aaron Dean, right here in front of me. Eddie Ross. Is Eddie Ross here? He's the one that does all the funerals from the BFW. He's not here. Well, guys, these are the people in this town that have done something for the veterans. And as long as I'm the mayor, we're going to do something as, as the city of Grants for the veterans. And this is the beginning. Um, a lot of people don't realize in Vietnam, 2.5 million Americans served there. What a number, huh? And yet they were spit on and had trash thrown at them when they came home. The people that were doing that were the ones that got the deferments. The daddy had a little bit of money. They went to college. Um, and that makes me sick that they could even think to do that. These people went over there and they did what their country asked them to do, whether they wanted to do it or not. They did their service. They did their duty. A lot of them died doing it, whether they wanted to do it or not. And I want to say to all of you, all of you Vietnam veterans out there, thank you so much. You guys put the way for the rest of us that came after you. Um, down there at the, at the memorial, there's one group that we didn't mention, and that's the Beirut group, guys. That's my group, okay? Um, just thank you. Thank you, guys. Welcome home, huh? Let's eat. Let's eat. Let's eat. Let's have some chat while these other guys are talking. Uh, I believe I got Michael Lewis up next. Come on up, Mike. Anytime I have an opportunity to say thank you to a vet, I take that opportunity, and today is such a day. Um, I want to thank John for inviting me to say a couple words here. Um, when, uh, when I was in high school in 1969, the Vietnam War was raging over there, and all of us who were that age, 17, 18, 19 years old, were uh, very, uh, very much interested in what was happening over there. Uh, some of you may or may not know how the draft worked in those days, but what we had was uh, a lottery system. The, uh, uh, the selected service each year would uh, put 366 capsules into a fishbowl, and uh, in each one of the capsules there was a, a day of the year. And they would draw the capsule out of the fishbowl, open it up, and if that was your birthday, you were going to get drafted. The first 195 people who, uh, whose birthday were drawn out of that uh, fishbowl were drafted. So all of us at that age were very much interested in the draft. In fact, it was live on TV, so we would all run home and watch this thing one day a year. Well, the year that it counted for me, they drew in 1972, and my number came up 230. So I, didn't, I wasn't drafted. But I just want you all to know that um, those of us that were back here were with you over there. When, when you went there, your, your mom, your dad, your brothers, sisters, and some of you wives and children were with you. And we just want to say thank you to all of you who served and we very much appreciate it from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Senator Clemente Sanchez, are you out there? Here he is. You get to speak twice today, just like me. Uh, thank you, Mary, and, and thank you, everyone. Again, let me thank you again for coming out, and uh, let me thank our veterans. Uh, you know, us that, that did serve in the Air Force, you know, we all had family members that did. And, you know, we kind of take it for granted. You know, the freedom that we have here in the United States of America. And, and there's no better country to, to live in than the United States of America. For, for some of you that, that do travel abroad and, 
and you visit other countries. Last summer I was in Taiwan. Uh, like I just mentioned earlier, this summer I was in uh, Turkey and the small country of Azerbaijan. A lot of people don't know that country. That used to be part of the Soviet Union. And it's right next to Russia. And we were right there 20 miles from the border. And, you know, in that country, uh, Azerbaijan and Turkey, you know, you walk around there with uh, individuals that are armed all the time and to protect there. But, you know, you come to the United States of America and people that I talk to there in those countries, you know, they always say or they tell me, uh, you know, you're very lucky to live in the United States of America because of the freedom that you have and your freedom of speech and all the freedom that you have. But we only have that freedom because of all of you and everyone that served in the armed forces that are protect us and the ones that are serving now. So with that, I just want to say thank you again. Thank you for serving. Thank you for protecting all of us. And let's also thank the family members of those that have served because they take a lot. They give a lot. Let their spouses, whether it be female or male serving in the, in the armed services. And they, they, they take a lot of, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, a sacrifice. They sacrifice a lot for us just so that we can be who we are, where we are. Again, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And thank you, Harry, for, for the Vietnam Memorial. But I want to say another thing, one more thing before I finish here. You know, we also have a Korean Memorial here over in uh, uh, Alfonso property over there in, uh, across the tracks. Over, uh, You know, Zuni Canyon Road. We have a Korean Memorial there, and we can thank Alfonso for, for getting that put in. I remember when we, when, when that was dedicated, that was one of the last things. So go visit that there also. Again, thank you, thank you, Mayor, and thank you all for, for your service. Is William Esteban here? He was invited to speak. William, you're not here? Where are you? He decided not to come. Tom Jackson Sr. is here. He's a Vietnam veteran. He's going to tell us a little story about Vietnam. Thank you very much for coming and sharing with us today, Tom. I get with it, Tom. I do, I guess. Huh? Uh, I'd like to start by thanking all of you. Uh, this In 1966, with John Kennedy's words ringing in the face, that's not what your country I enlisted in the United States Army. And I served as an infantry sergeant in Vietnam until 1968 in June when I was critically wounded and uh, started my trip back home. In June of the following year, I was discharged from the Army. When I came back, my story might be a little different than a lot of the guys. I spent a year in an army hospital, or a different army hospital, starting in Vietnam and Japan and California, and then finally William Walmart and El Paso. But I, th I think that was kind of a debriefing. I gotta tell you, when, when I was in El Paso, of course, for this is right now, and they a lot of respect for the military. And tell you this, not once when I was in uniform before I went to Vietnam or after I came back did anybody ever spit on me. It might have been because I had that big screaming eagle on me.
understand the riots and burning the buildings and different things. I'll tell you one little story that uh, I stuck with me. I was in college in agriculture and they had a student union there, it was like a snack bar. And I was sitting in there eating hamburger or something between classes and some cowboy comes running in and says the hippies are attacking the ROTC. Well, when I went to uh, New Mexico State, it was a land grant college and it was required that everybody take ROTC. All the males had to go in ROTC. That was back in the 60s. Well, when I enrolled at New Mexico State, they gave me six credits for ROTC. So I had six college credits without having to do anything. They also gave me, I think, six credits for PE. Figuring I'd been in the Army, I had some PE behind me. So. There was some benefits from being uh, in the military. But anyways, we're, I mean, sitting in this snack bar, I saw a little white cross over here. The protesters had these white crosses, and the ROTC was parading in the horseshoe, and the hippies were out there driving these little white crosses around the front of them. DC guys were hopping over and trying to stay in formation. So all the cowboys busted out of the Aggie snack bar, run over there, started grabbing those crosses and beating the hippies on the head with them. And the ROTC is still trying to march. And I'm sitting there and they're eating a the hamburger thinking, none of you damn people know what it's all about. Uh, I came home, I, I didn't wear green for years. My wife bought me a green shirt. I was I kind of just blended into the woodwork. Got a, got a green, got a family, and went on with my life. Uh, my hometown was Deming, and while I was still in the hospital, I'd go to Deming. And the VFW and the American Legion and the DAV, all of them had things for veterans. Deming lost a lot of young men. So my experience was that I was always treated with respect. Uh, I, I, like I said, I never had anybody spit on me or anything. Uh, I know it did happen sometimes. Uh, but I, uh, I have always uh, felt like um, the Veterans Administration, I don't have a complaint. I don't go to them. I don't go to the hospital. I've always been in charge to take from them. year at New Mexico State, I, I, I lived in a dormitory, and my roommate was a Canadian citizen. And that was the year they came out with the lottery. And when they drew the numbers, everybody was putting their number on their dorm door. Number one, I'm done. Number 365, I'm still alive. This little Canadian kid put Canadian citizen, ha ha, on the door. And I put retired army on the door. You've never seen so much graffiti and cuss words posted on somebody's <laughs> dorm room. But anyway, uh, I, I really appreciate what you guys do for veterans and uh, keep it up. We got a lot of young guys that are coming back now from Afghanistan and Iraq and, and uh, they're trying to adjust. Uh, I think I'm one of the lucky ones. I, I made it through it and, and I was always just happy to be back home. I didn't expect a lot, but uh, I think I've been treated real well. And I appreciate you guys asking me to come and speak. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tom. Felix, you want to say a couple words? Come on up. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, my name is Felix Gonzalez. I live in Milan. I uh, served a year in the Republic of Vietnam. Uh, what I really want to say is how lucky we are to live in the United States of America. How lucky we are to have the freedoms that we that we do. As I was moved around the country of Vietnam, you could see uh, 
the people, the way they live, uh, the way they were treated, their government, um, it, it, it was not a good thing to see. And uh, when I came back, I was very proud to have served uh, the, uh, the United States of America, New Mexico, Inasco, New Mexico, where I came from. And now that I live in the village of Milan, uh, all I gotta say is, God bless America and God bless everybody here. Thank you very much.